DAX is the most frustrating thing about Power BI. That is why I'm excited about this new feature. We can now ask Power BI what DAX we want and it will generate the code for us. Finally, I can dump all my DAX books. I can dump all can my dump all my DAX, 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 DAX books. Let's take a look at this feature. To use this feature, go to Power BI and load up any data. Here I have loaded a sample employee data set and then click on the quick measure feature. This will open up the old quick measure screen by default. So before you do this, you need to go to the file, options and settings, options and go to the preview feature option and enable the quick measure suggestions box. This feature is currently in preview mode, but eventually this will become mainstream. Click OK and then restart the Power BI. And now we are able to access the quick measure feature. When you tap on that, this opens a tab here with either predefined calculations or the suggestions option. I'm going to go to the suggestions and let's take a look at our data. This is employee data here with some employee IDs, their FTE, salary, etc. Let's ask a question like total FTE. And when you click on generate, this will calculate a total FTE measure using the simple sum formula. So here you can see that the DAX Power BI has generated is measure equal to sum of data table FTE column. I'm going to add this measure. I'm going to select this measure and rename this as total FTE. Next, let's try asking a question of how many employees are there. Now, a real world way of saying this is how many employees or how many staff are there. But because of the way our data is structured, it is in a table named data. So we need to ask a question that is kind of suitable for our data model. So I'm going to just ask count of data and let's just try this. This is just going to do a count rows measure. Again, nothing mysterious here. If you are familiar with DAX, the kind of measures that we are writing are fairly simple ones, nothing complicated here. But once you have some simple measures, we can go and technically ask more complex questions to DAX. I'm going to rename this measure as headcount. Both of these measures, headcount and total FTE are not that complex. So let's take it up to the next level and ask a more complex question. Let's ask what is the female headcount? Here we are not specifying where to find the word female and let's see what Power BI does here. It came up with a number. I'm going to add this so we can read the formula. So this is what it says. Calculate data headcount. Keep filters. Data gender is equal to female. So this is pretty much how I would write the formula. I would probably not use the word keep filters there unless I'm doing something more specific on the UI. So let's add this. And now let's see what the female headcount is as a percentage of overall headcount. So again, I will use the natural language. What is the percentage of female headcount? And here is the DAX it has generated. I'm just going to add this so we can see this whole thing here. Here we can see that it is actually using variables, which is pretty awesome to begin with, where filtered value is calculate data headcount, keep filters, data gender is equal to female. Now this is a little bit of redundant because we already have a female headcount measure. I would have just reused that and then an overall headcount and then divide one with another. So the pattern is pretty much how I would normally write DAX, but it's just that this feels a lot more verbose. Let's go to the next level. Here I would like to make a report where I want to see for each department what is the difference between male versus female employees and then visualize that as a column or a bar chart. So the question is difference between male and female headcount. Here I'm getting a number 520 that looks a little bit too high. So I'm going to add this and then we can read that measure. So where baseline value is calculate female headcount where gender is equal to male. 
Now, we know for a fact that that is actually a rubbish way of doing it because I think it's not reading this correctly. So it's saying male and female headcount rather than thinking of these as two separate words and then calculate the female headcount itself and then doing the difference. So the correct wording here or correct measure here would be just do a headcount rather than female headcount. So yeah, that's a problem with these kind of quick measures or any artificial intelligence based code generation practices. Especially if you are learning, then we don't even realize that the, the AI has made a mistake because we have no other reference points to verify what is the right way of doing it. So I would be quite cautious around this particular feature. Let's see what else it can do. Let's try one more example. What is the MP ID of top salary? It says 119.754.81. So it's actually giving me the top salary, not the ID. And it is using a summarize and, uh, and top n to calculate all of this. But I feel like it's actually giving me the measure value, which is the wrong one. We are asking for employee ID, not the salary itself. So this is a completely wrong result altogether and even the intent is not properly captured. So yeah, again, a wrong answer from our measure suggestion option. Well, I'm not throwing away my DAX books. While the quick measure feature is interesting, it is nowhere near perfect. We can, of course, use it to make some simple measures or write the code, which we can later modify. And that brings us to the topic of learning DAX. If you want to learn how to use DAX and Power Pivot, check out this video. It has quite an in-depth explanation of how DAX really works along with 20 plus examples. I'll catch you there. Bye.